the voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Mark chapter 1 verse 3 is a resounding proclamation that reverberates through the corridors of time, a divine summons to prepare for the arrival of the King of Kings. This verse, echoing Isaiah's prophecy in Isaiah chapter 40 verse 3, carries with it the weight of a heavenly command. It is not a mere suggestion, but a decree from the throne of God. The wilderness in which this voice cries out is symbolic of the spiritual barrenness, the desolate condition of the people who had drifted far from their covenant with God. John the Baptist, the forerunner of Christ, stands as that voice in the wilderness, heralding the imminent coming of the Messiah, the one who would bring redemption and judgment. In the days of John the Baptist, Israel was in a state of spiritual desolation. The people were living under the oppressive rule of the Roman Empire, but even more devastating was their spiritual condition. The religious leaders, the Pharisees and Sadducees, had corrupted the true worship of God with legalism, self-righteousness and hypocrisy. They were more concerned with outward appearances and rigid adherence to their man-made traditions than with the inward transformation that God desires. The temple, once a place of genuine worship and the presence of God, had become a den of thieves. It was into this spiritually barren landscape that John the Baptist came, proclaiming a message of repentance and preparation. The command to prepare the way of the Lord is not a call to superficial change or external rituals. It is a call to a profound heart-level transformation. The way of the Lord is the path of righteousness, the way of holiness, and the road of repentance. To prepare the way is to remove every obstacle that hinders the coming of the Lord into our hearts and lives. The crooked paths of sin, the mountains of pride, and the valleys of despair must be leveled. The way of the Lord must be made straight, not according to human standards, but according to the holy, unchanging standards of God. John's ministry was characterized by an unflinching call to repentance. He did not mince words. He did not soften the message to make it more palatable. In Matthew chapter 3, verses 1 through 2, we read, In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. This was the crux of his message. Repentance. Repentance is not merely feeling sorry for our sins. It is a radical turning away from sin and a turning toward God. It is the recognition that we have offended a holy God and the resolve to walk in obedience to his commands. The call to repentance is as urgent today as it was in the days of John the Baptist. The moral decay, the spiritual apathy, and the outright rebellion against God that characterize our world are clear indications that the way of the Lord has not been prepared in the hearts of men. Just as the people of Israel were called to prepare the way for the first coming of Christ, so too are we called to prepare for his second coming. The Lord is coming again, not as the suffering servant, but as the righteous judge. Revelation chapter 19 verses 11 through 16 describes this coming in vivid detail. Now I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. And he who sat on him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. And he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. The urgency of the message to prepare the way of the Lord cannot be overstated. The time is short. The day of the Lord is at hand. The Apostle Paul 
in Romans chapter 13, verses 11 through 12, writes, And do this, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now, our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. This is not a time for complacency or compromise. The Lord's return is imminent and we must be found ready with our hearts and lives in alignment with His will. To make His path straight is to live in obedience to His word. It is to cast off the works of darkness, to renounce sin in all its forms, and to walk in the light of His truth. The paths that lead to the Lord are narrow and difficult. As Jesus Himself declared in Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 through 14, Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and there are many who go in by it because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. The straight path is not the easy path, but it is the only path that leads to life. John the Baptist's message was not just for the Jews of his time, it is a message for all of us today. The call to prepare the way of the Lord is a call to repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. It is a call to examine our hearts and lives, to remove every hindrance and obstacle that stands in the way of our relationship with God. This is not a message of comfort for those who are living in sin. It is a message of warning and urgency. The time is now to make the necessary changes, to repent of our sins and to walk in obedience to God's word. The coming of the Lord is both a glorious and a terrifying event. For those who are prepared, for those who have made his path straight in their lives, it will be a time of great rejoicing. But for those who have ignored the call to repentance, who have continued to walk in their crooked ways, it will be a time of judgment. As the writer of Hebrews warns in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 31, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. The urgency of John's message should not be lost on us today. The wilderness is not just a physical location. It is the spiritual state of our world. The voice crying out in the wilderness is the voice of God's messengers today, calling people to repentance, calling them to prepare for the coming of the Lord. This is not a message to be taken lightly. It is a matter of eternal significance. The way of the Lord must be prepared in our hearts and in our lives, and it must be done now. To prepare the way of the Lord is to live in the light of eternity. It is to recognize that this world is not our home, that we are but pilgrims passing through. Our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await the return of our Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ, as Philippians chapter 3, verse 20 reminds us. The paths we walk in this life will determine our eternal destiny. Are we walking the straight and narrow path that leads to life, or are we on the broad road that leads to destruction? The call to prepare the way of the Lord is a call to action. It is a call to forsake the sin that so easily ensnares us and to run with endurance the race that is set before us, as Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 exhorts us. It is a call to live with urgency, knowing that the day of the Lord is at hand. It is a call to holiness, to purity, and to righteousness. As we prepare the way of the Lord in our own lives, we must also be mindful of our responsibility to prepare others. The Great Commission, as recorded in Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 through 20, commands us to go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them 
in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. We are not just called to prepare ourselves. We are called to be voices in the wilderness, crying out to others to prepare the way of the Lord. The time is now. The call is clear. The King is coming. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. Do not delay. Do not ignore this call. The stakes are eternal and the consequences are severe. The path must be made straight now. For the Lord is near, and His coming is imminent. The question is not whether He will come, but whether you will be ready when He does. Are you prepared to meet the Lord?